Hey guys, my name is E. I'm a professional sports videographer, and this video is for those of you who love to make NBA edits and mixtapes, especially those of you who feel like they're putting a lot of time and effort into this, and meanwhile, no one else seems to give a f Trust me, I've been through it myself and I know it's not easy. Like putting all your time into something, pouring your whole creative soul into it and getting nothing in return, that's rough. But I was able to grow out of it by using a few easy steps that I'm gonna teach you here today. And if you apply those same steps to your next mixtape, you should see a big jump in views, especially on platforms like TikTok and Instagram. So let's get into it. First thing first, it might look like I'm stating the obvious here, but you need to find and download high quality footage. Don't just use that typical broadcast live action shot that is super wide and has a bunch of extra graphics on it. Instead, use the replay that will come up a bit later, either when the play stops or at the end of the quarter. Those replays are usually great close-up shots with almost no graphics at all. And that's what you want for your mixtapes. Anyway, let's move on to my next tip on how to get more views for your NBA edits. On social media, especially if we're talking Instagram and TikTok, speed is definitely the name of the game. So you wanna keep your videos to around 45 to 60 seconds max and fill them with as many fast cuts as possible. The most common mistake I see in sports videos is when people put too much of a lead up to each play. So if you're downloading those replays like I mentioned earlier, instead of using long clips like these ones, you get a much better result with fast cuts like that. Just remember this, at the end of the day, no one cares about the lead up, all we want is the fireworks. And speaking of fireworks, you need some wow factor moments because these are the things that keep viewers engaged throughout your entire video. And average view duration is one of the main metrics that influence um, how often your video gets shown on other people's feeds. Average view duration is the average amount of time that people spend watching your video. So if most people just watch for a few seconds and then scroll away, the algorithm will assume that the video is boring and it will eventually stop showing it to people. But if a lot of them are watching it till the end, then the algorithm will know that it's a great video and will start showing it to a lot more people. So to make sure that that's what happens to your video, you need to put a wow factor moment at the very start, in the middle, and at the end of your video. And a wow factor moment can be an amazing play. Crosses half court, fakes and fires from half court on the way. He got it! Or it can also be a great visual effect. Can hand off, dream on, dunking it down the lane. Editing to music is also a crucial part of retaining your viewers' attention. And the first rule of editing to music is to never let a beat drop go to waste. One of those wow factor moments I mentioned earlier should definitely go over the biggest beat drop in your music track. So you basically want to sync that beat drop perfectly with something like a massive dunk. Or you could even sync that same beat drop with a buzzer beat. Also, make sure the intensity of your edit matches the intensity of your music. So, for example, if you're using like a, a super dramatic music track, like epic trailer style, um, make sure you edit accordingly because you can't simply rely on the music to magically make your video overly dramatic. So ultimately, the more beats and the more intensity there is in the music, the more work you'll have to do in the edit. 
When it comes to Instagram and TikTok, I definitely recommend editing in a four by five ratio, which is a portrait size, because um, that's what's popular on these platforms. That's what people consume. And also this is what uses the most uh, real estate in the feed. So if you want to grab people's attention, I know that originally the game footage will come in a 16 by nine uh, horizontal sort of landscape shape. But if you keep it that way, you're going to have so much much dead space on top and below that you're just wasting an opportunity to grab your viewers attention so don't be afraid to zoom into that footage to make it a bit bigger on the phone screen and also if you see that the ball is getting out of frame don't be afraid to use keyframes to basically follow the ball so as your image is you know being sort of zoomed in you can then use keyframes to move with the ball so that we don't miss anything and it actually gives your footage a cool sort of extra movement that people really enjoy Creativity is obviously a great tool to capture people's attention on social media. But I know that a lot of you watching this video right now, you're probably early in your sports videography journey and the creativity of others sometimes can be quite intimidating which is why I encourage you to move to this next video where I give away three very simple tips that will help add creativity to your sports videos, even if you don't have much experience. So hopefully, I'll see you guys there.